Welcome to the Carnivore Cast, a podcast focused on the carnivore diet and lifestyle, with practical advice from successful carnivores, citizen scientists, and top researchers. I'm your host, Scott Meslinski, and I'm here to speak with experts and experienced carnivores to get answers to your biggest and meatiest questions while helping you live your best life as a carnivore. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the Carnivore Cast on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Elizabeth Stern has been on a carnivore diet for over three years and as a 64-year-old single mom since 1996 has used the diet to lose weight, improve her life, get off medications, and also help hundreds of people do the same in several different Facebook groups. I'm super excited to chat with you today, Elizabeth. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. Of course. And um, we were just chatting before the show. I think you have tons of wisdom to share from all the people you've helped, but let's let the audience get to know you a little bit better. Um, and I want to get to know you a little bit better. So tell us a bit about how you got here. What what was your health and diet journey? Well, I grew up um, one of seven children and there was always meat and two vegetables on the table and usually a starch. Uh, my mom was an amazing cook. She cooked for nine people every single day. And I always liked meat. And being from a big family, we didn't have a lot of money, but for our birthday, we got whatever we wanted. And I can remember being eight years old and all I wanted was a pound of steak just for myself for dinner. Everybody else got to eat spaghetti that night, but I got my steak. So it was sort of in the cards for me long before this all started. Um, And then after college, I was getting ready to get married. I put on a lot of weight and my aunt had lost a ton of weight with Atkins. So I tried it. And in six months, I dropped 50 pounds and loved every minute of it. And then like most people with Atkins, you start to add back the carbs. And then the weight came back for me and just sort of fell into a routine that when I would start to feel way overweight, I would cut all my carbs out for a while. So that's probably what has kept me from being diabetic or having serious health issues my whole life, because I would take seasons where I would go very low carb. And then the year I was turning 65, which was five years ago, 2016, I was at my doctor's. It was the heaviest I'd ever been. I wore a size 26 to my daughter's wedding. And I said, I can't get down on the floor and play with my grandkids and get back up without help. And I didn't want to feel like that. So I went out and I bought the Atkins book and I went online because now we had Facebook and I found people weren't doing Atkins. They were doing keto. So I bought every book I could get my hands on. I did my research. Google is my friend. I mean, I'll research something to the nth degree. Joined the groups and loved it. Um, You know, gave everything away to my kids that I couldn't eat and had nothing in the house that wasn't keto. And I dropped over the course of almost two years, I dropped about 45 pounds. But by the end, I had stalled after, you know, the first year, year and a half. And I was hungry and I was cranky, and I had cut back to 1,500 calories a day, and I didn't want to try and make cauliflower taste like mashed potatoes anymore. I didn't, all I could think about was fat bombs, and I was tracking everything I put in my mouth down to the grains of salt in the water I was drinking, and I was exhausted. So in the groups I was in, they always offer you other groups on the side, and there was this group, and there was a big picture of a steak, and they said, we're only eating meat, and I went, that's nuts. That is nuts, but I want to try that because I'm hungry. I'm not eating enough meat. So I committed to 30 days for that and promptly put on eight pounds, but I felt amazing. So fortunately, I stumbled into Charles Washington's zeroing in on health group. Um, I went back and I looked at some of my first posts and um, I started eating zero carb. It was January 15th, 2018. And my first post in that group was a couple of days later. So it wasn't listening to a podcast or anything that brought me to it. It was just decades of understanding that low carb worked for me Um, and joined that group. Then I found Dana Spencer's group, Zero Carb Health. And within a few months, I, I just, I kept that same eight pounds and I started whining and complaining about that as we all do. And they both encouraged me to eat more, eat more. 
and said, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to trust you guys. So at six month mark, I cranked up to at least three pounds of meat a day and very quickly lost 10 pounds. So for me, it worked. And they kept telling me, it's not about the calories. It's not about the quantity. It's about the nutrition your body needs. You know, you are in your 60s. Um, sarcopenia is a real thing after 30. You know, I'm a sedentary person and I probably lost a lot of muscle. I'm sure I had. So I needed more meat. My body just needed that, those nutrients. And I kind of kept it three pounds for a couple of years. Didn't lose a whole lot more weight, but I dropped, gosh, two more sizes in my pants and three inches in my waist. In fact, I'm currently wearing a size 12, which I haven't worn since high school. Um, I'm 5'8", so I'm, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. Um, and then there was, <laughs> there was this challenge back in November of no salt. And I knew Dana didn't use salt. Charles doesn't. The Andersons don't. You know, most of the long-term carnivores don't add salt to their food. And I thought, well, I've never tried that. I like salt, but I'll try it for 30 days. And I've lost another 17 pounds since November, which I didn't expect. So uh, that was just a little biohacking that I'm doing. Uh, and, and I don't know if this is a permanent thing for me. I just know every time I go back to the doctors, I go every six months and she does massive blood work. Um, I get a real good deal there and I get the full lipid panels, you know, with uh, particle size and count. I get the anemia panels. I get everything. And it just gets better and better. In fact, she's become a low carb doctor because of me. And she told me recently in confidence that Blue Cross has cut her reimbursements and her bonus because she doesn't prescribe enough statins. She's encouraging her patients to modify their lifestyle rather than just prescribing pills. So, you know, this little venture that I went on, is hopefully impacting other people's health as well too. And I think that's the best thing, you know, that I can see coming out of it. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Elizabeth. And that that's sad about your doctor at the end, but it sounds like overall you're you're having a tremendous impact on on your own health um, and and impacting others and inspiring them to change as well, which I think is really amazing. And can can you talk about a little bit around how carnivore has changed for you over time? Um, like what did your diet look like at the beginning? And you mentioned cutting out salts, um, but right. what are some of the other changes you've made to how often you eat, what you eat, things like that? Oh yeah. Well, in the beginning, um, the very first day when I learned about this and I committed, I, I had two great big boxes. I filled up with all my almond flour and coconut flour and coconut oil and all those things. Um, and I gave that all to my kids and I went out and I bought a couple of pounds of ground sirloin, some blue cheese, some butter, ate the entire thing. And I thought I would died and gone to heaven because I hadn't eaten that quantity of meat at one sitting in, in two years. It felt amazing. Um, and I ate every time I was hungry. And that might have that might be eight times a day. It might be once a day. But eat meat, drink water was the mantra. And still is. So if I was hungry, I ate. If I was cranky, I ate. If I wanted a snack, I would eat. And I always, I still to this day, I always have what I call backup meat, whether it's cans of sardines or some pulled pork in the freezer. I've got meat at work in the freezer, in the fridge there. Um, I do not allow myself to go hungry. And at this point in my life, at my age, I'm never going to diet again. So I was eating all the time. And like I said, I gained weight because I needed the muscle, um, went to three pounds. And I think within about six to eight months, I sort of settled into two meals a day. Um, I don't tend to be hungry until I get to work. So sometime between nine and 11, I'll eat. And then I'm out of work at 3.30. So I'll come home and then I'll eat again. Now, if I've got plans to go out at night and I know that there's a function or there's going to be food for me, I'll either not eat or I'll have a small meal and then eat again. So that might be three times a day. And then occasionally on the weekend, I'll eat six times a day. I might get up in the morning and go, I got bacon in the fridge. Or, boy, that hamburger was good from last night. It's left over. Uh, and then I find myself it really stupid because I'll eat a small amount. And then an hour or two later, I'll get hungry again. And I'll spend the whole day nibbling. But yeah, I don't, I don't really care. I've been doing this for so long. I know that my body can handle it. So um, I'm not worried about that. And I'm, I'm probably eating between a pound and a half to three pounds of meat a day, probably about two pound average. 
that's normal for me. Yeah. It sounds like you found a really great, simple approach, worry-free approach to it. I, I really like how, um, it sounds like you're in a great place mentally, um, yeah. with your way of eating, which I think is, there's a lot to be said for that. And how about things like supplements, electrolytes, organs, um, things like that. Do you, do you play with any of that? Worry about that stuff? I did in the very beginning because I was still in the keto mindset. I, when I started carnivore, I had crushing exhaustion. I wasn't, you know, so many people that come from keto like me think, oh, we've got this. We're fat adapted. We're not going to have any adaptation symptoms. And that was the only one I had. I was exhausted. Um, and I know partly it was because of my keto mindset. I was drinking at about two gallons of water a day, which is ridiculous, but that was, it, it becomes a habit and you almost become addicted to it. So I knew I was flushing out all my electrolytes. And so in the afternoon at work, sometimes I would just make some hot, salty water or some bouillon and suck some salt down, but it just sort of aggravated it. It, 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 it didn't really solve anything, but it would temporarily make me feel better. Um, but the more I kept researching, the more I kept talking to Charles and Dana and Caitlin and Marcy, Lily and all those and Kelly and all those people. Um, I said, you know, I've got to try what works for me. So I cut out everything except salt and I only salt to taste or I did. Um, but over the two years, my folate kept dropping like crazy and my doctor couldn't understand it. She says, you eat so much red meat and she's nutritionist trained. She says, it makes no sense. All your other blood markers are phenomenal, but your folate, I mean, it was dangerously low. Like it's supposed to be over. I don't know, three or four, and it, it was down to 1.7. So Mine was a bit low at once at 1.2. Yeah. So we went and we tested, and I actually have the MTHFR variant. I've got that, which doesn't allow me to methylate folate. So I spent a few months um, eating more liver, which I like. I grew up eating chicken liver wrapped in bacon. I call it meat candy. I still love it. Um, but I found out I had to eat probably a pound every two weeks. And then I tested my numbers were better, but they weren't phenomenal. So it's, it was, it's getting hard for me to source good liver and I'm not just going to eat the grocery store stuff. So I do take a methylated folate tablet once a day. And I caution people, I said, get tested, you know, don't take it if you don't need it. If you like organs, eat them by all means, enjoy them, especially, you know, if they're cheap and they're delicious, have it. Um, but that's the only thing that I take is that one methylated folate tablet. And the folate came right up. The homocysteine, the, it wasn't so much the folate was low, but my homocysteine was high. It was like 16. Um, and so that came right down in about three months. So that's where I need to be. But, you know, I've got documented medical necessity. And if I, if I really had a good source for liver, I would give up the pills and, and get my nutrients from my food. So I've experimented with a little bit. I'm not a big fan of other organs. I didn't, I mean, my mother made us try tripe and heart and all those things when we were kids. And, you know, I'd just rather have a steak or, you know, another hamburger. Um, it's easy for me. I cook once. I cook in the evening. I cook two or three pounds of meat. I eat whatever I want. And the leftovers go with me to work the next day. Um, I don't want to have to think about it any more than that. Um, we call it meat zen. There's so much more room in my mind for other things. A lot of people ask me about how to make liver more tasteful and how to cook it or incorporate other organ meats on carnivore. Optimal Carnivore can help you do just that with their grass-fed organ complex. It was created by carnivores for carnivores. They start by sourcing 100% grass-fed organ meats from New Zealand, gently freeze-drying the organs and encapsulating them into convenient bovine gelatin capsules. Just six of these capsules a day is the same as eating an ounce of raw organ meat. I personally take these every single day, as does my wife. Even though we both eat liver and other organ meats, our ancestors would have eaten the whole animal. And this unique blend has nine different organs, including beef liver, brain, thymus, kidney, spleen, etc. And I think it's great to get a daily dose of these organs when you can. So it covers all your bases, whether you're at home or traveling. What's also cool is they plant a tree for every product sold, which helps the environment. So visit www.optimalcarnwar.com slash carnivorecast and use the code carnivore 10 to receive 10% off your purchase. Thanks and back to the show. 
you spend so much time in these groups helping people. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit, and we were talking before the show, I I think first place to start would be, can you talk a little bit about like following the science versus doing what works, doing what people in the groups have done forever? And like, what's the right balance, right? You don't want to be all the way on one side where you're just dogmatic, you know, this person, our hero, our our zealot, uh, (laughs) our guru said to do this, therefore, this is what we do. Um, But you also don't want to be chasing science and waiting for the science to catch up in some instances, like with carnivore, we know there's not a lot of good science. So how do you balance that? And how do you view that problem? Well, I usually, first of all, ask people, why are you even trying this? What's your motivation? What's your reason? What are your goals? And I probably type, I, I wish I could just cut and paste it 50 times a day. Carnivore is not a weight loss diet. I think that's the number one common misconception Um, because all the success stories we hear, you go on all the sites and, you know, I dropped a hundred pounds in six months. And yes, that's true. People will do that, but your body is not usually going to prioritize losing weight. So that's the biggest misconception, especially when like me, you go from eating 1500 calories a day to, I probably, I don't know, between 2,500 and 3000 calories a day. It makes no sense that you can lose weight eating like that. Um, but it's about the nutrition. And we know from Gary Tobbs and some of our other really smart people that weight is a lot more a function of your hormones than it is what you put in your mouth. Um, The other thing, everybody seems to think that they know the right way. They watched a video or they read somebody's book or they listened to a podcast. And so that's the way it has to be done. Um, I think Sean Baker, Dr. Sean Baker did a great service to the community by just bringing it out in the open, making it normal, um, bringing so much attention to carnivore. But at the same time, he is a physical freak. He is a unique specimen. Um, There's a few others out there, a few doctors. We all know who they are. And they are biohacking and tweaking to have a, a body fat percentage that isn't normal for most of us. And that's perfect. That's great. But I can't do what Baker does. You know, I can't do what this doctor does or that person does. I'm just a normal person. And so the focus of these particular groups are on the average person. Like Kelly was saying, those that that probably 80% of people that are going to do well just eating meat and drinking water. Eat when you're hungry, drink when you're thirsty, rinse and repeat. Um, there's, again, there's some really good articles on zero carb health about why these particular groups are dogmatic. Again, they've seen what happens over the years to the majority of people that that tweak and play around with things. Um, there's articles on tweaking. And really I'll tell people, just eat meat and drink water for six months. You know, if you if you have a medical deficiency or you have a health issue, work with your doctor. We're not doctors. That's the other thing. People want medical advice. You know, I've got arthritis, should I give up my medication? go see your doctor. And that's, I lock those posts. If I've got the, the authority to lock those posts, I do right away. Um, we saw what was the 1.6 million group. Um, it was a banting group and they got taken off of Facebook for over a week because somebody had recommended electrolytes or vitamins to somebody. That's medical advice. We're not doctors. And even if we are, we're not your doctor. So we don't give medical advice. We're not telling people what to do. It's This is what's been successful. And we've got the Andersons, 21, 22-year carnivores. We've got probably 99, 95% of who we know, at least, are the very long-term carnivores in these groups sharing their experience. Um, the files are worth their weight in gold. In fact, before Facebook even existed, Charles was on with two or 300 people in a... Um, it was a forum, but it wasn't on Facebook. And somebody fortunately copied all those pages. There's three or 400 pages. And those are saved as a PDF in zeroing in on health on Facebook. So I tell people, go go read the files before you ask any questions, do your homework. Um, and for people that do, they have these great success stories. So it works for most people to keep it simple. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I really like that advice. And and 
I guess you've spent so much time helping people. What are some of the common questions and misconceptions you see in carnivore groups? You know, feel free to take this wherever you want. Okay. Weight loss, fasting, electrolytes, oh, yeah. fat to protein ratios, yeah. anything. Like what? You, the floor <laughs> is yours. Let's hear. Like, what are all the things people are asking about and all the things? Well, the majority wrong? of people come from keto or low carb or Atkins. Um, somebody that's eating a standard diet isn't going to one day wake up and say, oh, I think I'll just completely eat meat. Al although we do see that. And it's actually almost easier to help them um, because they're making such a radical shift. But if they've been keto, and especially for years like I was and others have been, they think they have the answers. And they they bring those keto, that, that mentality and what we call keto tricks like bulletproof coffee and electrolytes and things like that. They bring that into the carnivore way of eating. And one of the things I like about having what I call the band hammer, I can lock, you know, conversations, I can kick people out is because they want to insist their way is right. And I think it was Charles that said, look, you are welcome to come into our home, but don't come and rearrange the furniture. You know, this is our house. Um, start a group, start your own group, do whatever you want, preach whatever you want. There's hundreds, thousands of other carnivore groups out there. But the couple that I'm in are the ones that are the oldest, not necessarily the largest, but again, they are the more dogmatic. They are the strictest. Um, again, because for those of us that have to eat this way, it changes our lives. And we want to help people that, you know, want to, want to be the same way, you know, um, Everybody thinks they need to take electrolytes. Everybody thinks they need to drink uh, sole water, lots of salt, um, supplement, fast. I'm not losing weight, so I have to stop eating as much. I have to start fasting. Um, you know, we know from the experience that women in particular really don't do well. For Again, for the most part, I'm talking about the 80%, eating one meal a day. Um, it's hard to eat two or three pounds of meat at a sitting. And women's hormones are different from men. You know, viva la différence. Um, we seem to do better with two meals a day or some even three. Um, part of the biggest problem people have is with their families. And they may be the only person that they know that's eating carnivore. And that's hard. Um, one of my daughters was so worried about me. She made me bring her with me to my doctor's appointment. So my doctor could show her my four inch file and say, your mother's been coming here for 10 years. I saw her at her heaviest and her sickest. And wow. I've got all these tests. I mean, I've had EKGs, I've had bone scans, I've had all of it. And she said, I can't argue with these results. She said, I've never seen anybody change their health just with lifestyle, not like this. Um, it's made her a believer. And I sent her all the articles. I even sent her... Um, Principia Ketogenica, that book. That's Ash Simmons. Nice. Book. Yeah, yeah. He's he <laughs> what he's what inspired me to start carnivore. Him oh and my Amber. He is he is um he's funny. Oh, by the way, Phil Escott said that I needed to give you a virtual butt squeeze. Okay, so consider your <laughs> consider. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> I think it's a great honor from Phil, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's the electrolytes, the electrolytes, the salt the fasting, the tweaking. Um, and that's great. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. You are, you know, it's N equals one. Um, but part of the re part of what I really look for is people being dogmatic that their way is the only right way. And I'll say, you know, I, I don't know. I just know this is what works for me. This is what's worked for this person for 10 years and this one for 13 and this one for 20. You've been doing this five months. So get a little experience under your belt, go start your own Facebook group, preach your doctrine, go for it, you know, and that's okay. And I think that's how I've changed over the years. Cause when I first started, it was like, this is the only way and everybody needs to be this way. And they don't, and I don't care. I don't care what you put in your mouth. I just know I have to be careful what I put in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great philosophy. I think yeah. too, too many people try to um, forgive the pun jam their way of eating down other people's throats. Um, and to that, to that, uh, Elizabeth, uh, how do you think about, you know, hundred percent strict carnivore versus 
um, 90% carnivore or carnivore keto or um, some of these other things? When When is it okay for people not to be hundred percent. Who is that okay for? Do you get kicked out of the carnivore club if you eat other foods? How do you think about that? No. In fact, Dana just did a survey in Zero Carb Health. We've got, I think there's 16,000 people in there. Uh, the, the one thing I want everybody to know is I don't let anybody into that group. I don't have that authority. I do in Rich's group, um, Strict Carnivore, but Dana is the only one. I have people messaging me all the time. I applied a week ago. Okay. Dana lives in Northern California. She's frequently without power. This is just Faith's book. It's not her life. Um, and she she reviews every single person that applies to be in the group and looks at their profiles and everything else. And she doesn't let strangers in. So if your profile is empty, don't apply because she's not going to let you in. Um, but I can't kick people out. Um, again, I, I don't think most people need to be 100% carnivore. I just don't. If you have the ability to tolerate um, some plants, eat them. You know, and I'm going to be jealous because you can eat raspberries and I can't enjoy them. Please let me watch you eat them. You know, like Kelly talked about when she was pregnant, she made her husband eat ice cream in front of her so that she can enjoy it without actually having to eat it. Um, I feel the same way. Uh, I, like I said, I think most people do need to um, be in some version of low carb. I think it's it's normal, healthy way to eat. But you know, 90% carnivore. I don't think that's carnivore. Amber O'Hearn has a very good article. Like what is a carnivore? Um, it, it started on her empiri.ca. I think she's moved to a new site that's called, um, eat, eat meat, mostly fat. I, I can't remember. She's, she's putting the chapters of her book up there that she's writing. And she said, you know, really the zero carb is a misnomer. Carnivore is a misnomer. It's something in between, who gets to define that? And her conclusion is basically the people who started this, the people who've been around from the beginning. Um, if you want to call it something else, call it something else. But that's what we have to continue with because I find people all the time and I say I'm carnivore. They go, oh, you eat meat. And I go, no, I only eat meat. And then I have to have this long mm. explanation. Well, do you know what a vegan eats? Okay, I eat nothing a vegan eats. I eat everything they eat. <laughs> I'm the opposite of a vegan, and they kind of try to wrap their head around that. And they go, "So you don't eat, you don't want a salad?" Okay, let me let me go back to the vegan. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, you you've been there. Um, yeah, yeah, I've I've had to explain it to hundreds of people at this point. <laughs> yeah, and somebody finally got it the other day. Um, I was I was sitting at my favorite little, actually, it was yesterday. It was my favorite little corner bar, and um, I do make exceptions. I have again, I give up caffeine, so I have a decaf in the morning, and then. Once or twice a week, I will have a whiskey. So I'm having a drink. And the only thing I wanted was bacon. Now, again, I gave up salt. So I knew I was going to be paying a price for eating bacon. I knew my ankles were going to be swollen. Um, but that was okay. It was really good bacon. So this plat pl platter comes out and all it is is a pile of bacon. And a half a dozen people looked and they said, what's that? It's bacon. I said, that's what you're eating? I said, yeah, it's my dinner. And one guy looked at me and he goes, Atkins on steroids. I'm like, you get it. <laughs> you get it. Yeah, then, that guy knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great answer. I, I'm completely with you. I think, um, you know, I, I encourage people to try a carnivore diet. See how you feel. See how you look, perform, how your digestion goes. You know, yeah. use it as an elimination diet. Many people will have to stay there. That's okay. Right. Um, people with certain conditions, people with certain mental approaches to food, people um, who just who just don't care to reintroduce other foods. That's fantastic. Um, but there are a lot of people who will be better off if they can introduce more foods. And if they try to overly restrict and not add anything back, it, it may result in them completely falling off the wagon or driving themselves crazy or driving their uh, loved ones crazy. So like- We're still human beings. It's a- yeah. it's, it's it's our life. You know, that's why I said, you know, somebody said, well, you drink, that's not carnivore. I said, but you know what? I'm a human being. Yeah. So I count the cost. I consider the consequences. I know what it's going to cost me, but I've been doing this long enough that it's okay. You know, and I, I've got a three-year-old granddaughter and my, her, her mother bakes a lot. If she runs up one day and says, granny, I made you a cookie. I will take a bite of it. I won't eat the whole cookie, but I will stand there in front of her and I will take a bite. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm not, uh, have my three-year-old crying in front of me. <laughs> Good for you. 
but my kids know better. Um, yeah. They always make sure there's plenty of meat. Or again, if I'm going someplace where there's, you know, I know it's not going to be suitable, I eat before I go or I just don't eat. It's yeah. just not that big a deal. You know, I don't get hungry, hungry. I don't, yeah. I don't feel that pain anymore. Um, I mean, the other day I was at work, I got busy and I realized when I got home, oh, my food's in the fridge back at work. I never ate. I never <laughs> it. So I like that freedom too. Yeah, absolutely. That freedom from food is absolutely massive. Um, anything else you'd like to rant on? Things that really pique your interest in carnivore or diet in general? There are lines that get drawn all the time on the grain finished versus grass finished. And again, you know, I'm sure, mm. I'm absolutely sure. Again, grass fed is, as you know, can be pellets fed to cows in a CAFO. It, it, it's not necessarily a sign that the meat's any healthier. Yes, we need regenerative agriculture. Yes, our farmers need to make more money. We need to support them. Absolutely. And we pray and hope that that time comes. But in the meantime, we're part of this planet. You know, we're not a disease on this planet. We're, we're creatures here too. And I would rather somebody eat meat out of a tube from Walmart than eat a box of cereal. Eat the meat that you like and you can afford and drink water. Drink the, eat the best meat you can afford, the best water you can drink. And yes, always strive for the best if you have an opportunity to support like Dr. Baker's trials or, you know, Peter Ballastet, some of, some of these other organizations, you know, throw a few bucks their way. Um, if we all chipped in a little bit, I think we could go a long way towards restoring an ancestrally healthy diet to the people of this world. Um, I don't know if we're going to see it in our lifetime, but I know personally I'm seeing the effect on my children and my grandchildren. Um, my daughter allowed me to feed her daughter her very first solid food, which was a piece of almost raw filet mignon. And that six month old loved it. I've got a oh, picture wow. of her face just covered in blood, you know, like the little um, Mongolian kids, you know, when they're eating the raw meat and she was in heaven, you know, um, I've got her appetite so that when I go to see her, she asks if I brought her liverwurst because she likes liverwurst and she's three. So, you know, they're not, they're not Amazing. carnivores. Yeah. So they are allowing me to have a little bit of influence um, just because they've seen what's happened to me, not because the science is there, but I'm living proof that this way can make you healthy and keep you healthy. So, you know, I could be around in another 30 years. My grandmothers were in their nineties. Um, I celebrate my 65th birthday this summer. Um, and I will probably go buy a two pound prime ribeye from my favorite butcher shop who saves me all the trimmings and gives them to me for free, which is wonderful. Um, I think since I gave up salt, I, I, I eat more fat. Fat's tastier than the meat. Um, so I may have gone, I was probably 65, 70 fat, although I don't measure. I'm probably closer to 75% now. And But there's days when I eat very lean and days I eat very fatty. Um, I don't worry about it you now. Yeah, good for you. That's, that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I really like that. And uh, Elizabeth, this has been fantastic. Um, I think you have so much to share and you've helped so many people. I, I want to thank you for that, um, sincerely. And uh, thank you for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Where can folks find you, find out more about you? The, well, I'm on the zerocarbhealth.com website, although I haven't written any articles. That Those are all 5, 10, 15, 20-year veterans that wrote those. And most of them were, were Dana Spencer. Um, the only place you're going to find me is in Zero Carb Health Facebook, Zeroing in on Health, and Strict Carnivore Zero Carb Life, I think, is Scott's group. Um, my Instagram and Twitter and those feeds aren't necessarily carnivore, they're personal. So I'm not a celebrity. I'm not doing podcasts or YouTube videos or writing books. Um, I'm just monitoring and kind of keeping the, the message true in those groups. But if somebody will private message me and they want some help, I have three or four people I'm helping right now, just encouraging them, you know, um, but if somebody needs help, just contact me, but you, you need to do it through the Facebook messenger. Yep. Okay. That's great. Okay. 
Well, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Again, it's been an honor and a pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do for this community too. I've listened to every single podcast you've ever recorded. Oh, out. wow. Thank you. Yeah. That means the world. Well, you're just a treasure trove and the people that you bring on have all the answers. I mean, they yeah. really, or they're, they're all striving the guests. for it. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Scott. Of course. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the Carnivore Cast on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Carnivore Cast. If you enjoyed this episode, please review on iTunes. It really helps us out and share it with a friend. What questions would you like answered or who would you like to hear from in the carnivore research community? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at carnivorecast or go to carnivorecast.com. You can also email me at info at carnivorecast.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep it carnivore.